when we say I will do, there are two concepts here. I, I, I want you to connect. Though. There are two concepts here by the grace of God we want to drill into the hearts of the new breed family. No, but one says comfort. When, when, when God said, I will, the word I will is a promise. Somebody say a promise. Talk to me, say a promise. When God said, come for, I will bless your life. What God is saying is that I promise you, come for, no matter who come against you, no matter who dislike you, no matter who tears you down, no matter who mess up your image, no matter who tarnish a tubaya, no matter, it doesn't matter how many group of people gather together to mess up your image. God say I will bless you. It is a, it is a check you can take and lay on and take and put in your bank account. It will never bounce back. I came to tell somebody here, get ready. I told you last Sunday that you must do what? Get ready. Oh, I don't know if I can finish with this. Praise God. Praise God, somebody. Praise God. So God is saying that I will do what? I will. That means grab a hold of that. We are not rushing with the scripture. You got to get truth into your spirit. So when the Bible says, or anytime you are reading the scripture and you come across the word will, will is a word of promise. I don't know if I should stay there, but I praise God. Will is a grab a hold of it now. Will is a what? It's a will, it's a word of what? It's a word of promise. Somebody say promise. That to me, say promise. So when the scripture say I will, that means God is making a promise to you. So when he told Abraham, leave your father's heart, leave your, leave your kindred, leave your family, leave your city, and go to grab a hold of that, follow pastor here, and go to a land that I will show you, and in that land, I will bless you, I will prosper you, and when you look at Genesis chapter 12, Mr. Who, and you begin to read, one, one of the things that you will keep coming across is the word will, I will bless you, and I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you, that word will, it keep God keep repeating it to Abraham, to, are you here? God keep repeating that word to Abraham, every now and then the word of God will show up and God will say, I will bless you. That's why when Abraham even out of his fear, out of his out of his cowardliness, he went he told Sarah to, to lie and say because you are so beautiful, praise God praise God, and he lied, he erred, he sinned, he made a mistake, God never killed him, number one God never withdrew his then on, I, I want to talk about our will, then on top of that, he even he became impatient. His wife pushed him to the point that I am this promise ain't coming to pass. So go into this slave girl who is living with her and have a child. Even when Abraham slept, God never killed him. God never changed his mind. I came to tell the new breed family, get ready because God has made a promise to this house. I said God has made a promise. Praise the name of Jesus. And I came to tell you here that God himself will find a way to bring that promise to a full manifestation. So even when Abraham trying to mess up the plan of God, God said you like you can do it. I have made the promise to you and I am committed to my word. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? God said bro, that promise to pass. 
That's why sometimes we look back. Some of us, we are like, man, I ain't deserve the blessing yet. Yeah, we don't really deserve it. Because you look at our life, we have, when you look back, you realize that you have made all kinds of foolish error in life. I don't know much about you, but I know about myself. But in the midst of it, God graciously sustained you because there was a promise. Are you here? There was a promise that God has made over your life. Some of us, we got business being in America. We got no business getting married to this beautiful daughter of Zion. But God out of his grace. Amen. Talk to a pastor. Amen. So I will, right? Now when you look at the word do, these two words put together is simply mean accomplishment. So when God said that I will do a new thing, what God Next Sunday, we look at that word new. What God was saying is this I will accomplish what a new thing in your life. And that's why he began by saying, What? Well, forget the old. I came to talk to us here. Forget the old. I don't know how many mistakes and messages you think your life forget about that mess. Because God is saying to you, uh, I will accom- you get what I'm saying here? That way, to, to, what it says, I will do a new thing also. Praise God. Praise God. It means what? Accomplishment. Are you here? Accomplishment. So when God promised Abraham, with all of Abraham failure, even though Abraham failed, but God never failed, and God did what God accomplished. You get you connected. God accomplished what He promised Abraham. I don't know whether you are connected here. Listen to me here very well. God, we didn't bring ourselves here. God brought us here for the purpose. God brought us here for the cause. God drove us here for the cause. And I came to tell the new breed family, relax yourself because we are in a new season. And in this new season, God has made a what? Grab a hold of that. Everyone here, God has made a promise to this heart. And whatever God has started doing in our life, in our mess, in our family, in our marriage, I came to tell you here that God will accomplish it. I said God will accomplish it. I said God will accomplish it. I said God will accomplish it. I didn't say you will accomplish it because your strength will fill you. But God will do what? Even when your strength fill you, God will do what? God will stay accomplish it because God has made a what? A promise to you. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, I thought you would be excited. Praise the name of the living God. Praise God. I will. It is an assurance from the mouth of the living God. I will. So, you get it? Will is promise. Do accomplishment. I promise connect the two when I'm. I'll connect the phrase. I am committed to accomplish. I will show you another scripture. I am committed to accomplish what I have started. Not what you started. When you started, you will grow weary. That's why I was telling the intercessors in the basement there in my office that this work is not a fleshly work. When you walk with God in your strength and in your might and in your power, along the way you will get weary. You will get frustrated. But when you rely, that's why Jesus said, 
Oh, that's what the apostle Paul said. I can do all things. You get it now? I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Praise God. I want us to go to the scripture. There are two scriptures I want to deal with today. So you get the first one. I will promise to accomplish. I will accomplish. Hallelujah. I will accomplish. Let's look at our scripture. There is something, Mr. Jeto, that, that just as I was studying, that came so strong. And I want to prove it today by the grace of God. Isaiah chapter 43. No, let's go back to the first one, Mr. Wood. You got the first one? I said it too. Okay. Keep that one. That is good. It's, it's okay. Don't worry. So let's look at our scriptures here. Isaiah, we are staying in Isaiah. We're going to, we are going to stay a little bit longer in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 43, but I love it. Let that, no, put, put that scripture there, my brother. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Thank you. Because that's where we are going. Isaiah chapter 43, the voice 19. Amen. Isaiah 43, the verse 19. For I am, let me go back to the uh, New King James Version of the Bible. Isaiah chapter 43, from the verse of the verse 19. The verse 19. Isaiah 43, verse 19. The Bible said, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and river in the desert. Amen. Amen. I will. So I was subject to this is what I will do. Somebody say I will do. Please talk to pastor say I will do. I will do. It means what? I will accomplish a new thing in your life. Amen. I will accomplish a new thing in your life. I will not just start. The idea that is this. I will not just start. But what I start, I will accomplish. What I start, I will fulfill. What I start, I will bring to completion. What I have started, and that's why the scriptures come in. What I have started in your life, I will bring it to completion. If it is God, if it is God who has started this ministry and this world, then every one of us here, we must rest assured. I did not hear you. I said, if it is God who has started this work and started this ministry and connected you to this house, then we must do what? We must rest assured that whatever he started, God will bring it to what? A completion. God will bring it to what? A fulfillment. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? So he said, whatever he said, forget the old. Behold, I am doing or I will do a new thing. I will accomplish a new thing in your life. But I want us to I want us to build on that and come to this scripture here. Look at the book of uh, Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1 verse 3 to 6. Philippians chapter 1, verse 3 to 1, to 6. Watch this now. The apostle Paul speaking here. Oh, I, I, I discovered something from this scripture here. Praise God. That validates most of the things we have been saying. Praise the name of Jesus. The Bible says, I'm reading from the New Living translation of the scripture. The Bible says, Every time I think of you, I give thanks to my God. Whenever I pray, I make requests for all of you with joy. This, I want to encourage you, really encourage you, come to Friday services. Because we are teaching deep things here. Come to what? Friday services. So he said, Mr. Who, for every time I 
think of you speaking to the church in Philippine. For every time I think of you, I give thanks to my God. Whenever I pray, I make my request. I ask God for all of you with what? With joy. On, on Friday, we talk about joy. How the people rejoice, even though they were going through and going the most difficult time of their work with God, but they were not crying and blaming everybody, blaming God, blaming power, blaming man. But in their circumstances, they were what? They were joyful. You know why? It was because of what they knew. What will make you joyful no matter what you go through or no matter what you are going through is a result of what you know that is at the end of your agony. I'm not hearing you now. I said what will make you to be joyful not to lose your joy in the midst of whatever you are going through is a result of what, of what you know. So watch this now. The Bible says for the joy that was set before what? Before Jesus. Connect your spirit now. For the joy that was set before Jesus, he despised the disgrace. He despised the shame. He despised the mockery on the cross. Because you know what? Even though he was going through shame, even though he was going through an excruciating pain, but in the midst of it, he knew something, praise the name of Jesus, that was greater than what? Than his pain. You know what will keep you joyful? In the midst of your trial, in the midst of your pain, in the midst of your shame, in the midst when everybody is against you and God all the negative start to say that by you. It is what? It is what will keep you joyful and make you to wake up every morning, not as a frustrated and dejected woman or man. It is what? It is what you know that is resident in your spirit. 